Welcome to Yolo, Texas, and this is our team of traveling Texans. <laughs> Ride shotgun with us as we visit breathtaking views. I can't put it towards how amazing this view is. Check out heart racing attractions. <laughs> and taste mouth-watering foods that only this great state has to offer. So can we dig in? My mic is usually the happiest person ever right now. Why you ask? Well, to simply put it, you only live once, Texas. Hey y'all, and welcome to Yellow Texas, your go-to guide for all the things to do and places to go all around the Lone Star State. I'm your host, AC, and on today's episode, we are taking you to a great Irish festival just in time for St. Patty's Day. But first, we are celebrating Texas's independence by visiting the birthplace of the Texas flag. So come with us to Conroe and learn just how great the great state of Texas is. Beautiful Conroe, Texas. If you're a fan of the show, you know we are no strangers to this town. We've been bass fishing on Lake Conroe. Oh my gosh, he's a big one! Got her adrenaline pumping with hydro rockets. <laughs> and wined and dined around historic Main Street. Cheers. But what you may not know is the significant history behind this small town. And that is what brings us back today. John Steinbeck once said that Texas is a state of mind. Texas is an obsession and above all, Texas is a nation in every sense of the word. I have to agree with that 100% and what better way to celebrate our great state than visiting the birthplace of the Lone Star Flag. And as we like to do here, we met up with our good friend Shannon to see what the day had in store. We always love coming to you to show us around and give us some places to go to. So what do we have in store for today? So of course we've got the flag park where we're standing today. You'll learn a little bit more about Charles B. Stewart and the making of the Texas flag. You'll learn more about the oil um, boom that happened here in Conroe when you visit the Heritage Museum a little bit later. All right. And we're going to go downtown and check out the historic Crichton Theater and uh, still in operation today. So we hope to uh, maybe we can catch a play while we're there. I love it. Great. Our first stop, the Lone Star Monument and Flag Park, where Larry Forrester shared the importance of Montgomery County's involvement in our Texas history. Why is the Lone Star State flag so important to Conroe? The flag was designed by Charles B. Stewart, who's, who's depicted in the bust here at the Flag Park. Charles B. Stewart was a physician, a businessman, a pharmacist, and a politician, a great public servant in our county. And by the 1830s, he had designed this Lone Star flag, which uh, about 15 years ago, the state legislature recognized this flag as being designed by Charles B. Stewart. And because of that, we have a lot of local pride in our flag and in the Texas Revolution. The flag park itself is composed of 13 flags. In addition to the Texas flag, there are 12 other flags that were the battle flags that would have been flown during the Texas Revolution. I think in our Texas DNA, is this sense of independence and pride, and the rest is history, as they say. Lone Star Monument and Flag Park was only the beginning of our historic tour. Up next, we set our sights for a Heritage Museum for even more perspective of that rich Texas legacy. So, fun fact, the museum lives right inside this historical home built all the way back in the 1920s. A successful sawmill owner built it just for his family, and I thought it was a cute story to share with all of you before we make our way inside. So, let's head in. Hello, I'm Sally with the Heritage Museum of Montgomery County. Let's go this way and I'll give you a tour. Yes ma'am, thank you. The Heritage Museum is home to five different exhibits, each unique with their own theme. You'll find glimpses of Montgomery County over the years. Lake Conroe was developed in the late 60s, early 70s and it was over 22,000 square feet at that time. Before we joined the Republic of Texas, that this is the size of Montgomery County. You'll meet the prominent figures of people who developed the county too. George W. Strike Sr. who uh -huh. discovered oil here in Montgomery County, June the 5th, 1932. 
and it changed our whole economy. Right. We had about 1,500 residents here. Once uh, all was uh, discovered, we had over 25,000 people that flooded the area. Wow. Dr. Stewart designed the Texas flag right here in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. Isaac Conroe, for whom Conroe was named, he was a Union soldier and he mustered out in Galveston. Peter and Richard Willis, they had over seven tobacco factories. You can also admire magnificent works of art and precious artifacts that are preserved for viewing pleasure. Well, this is our educational hallway uh -huh. and over here we have technology from the radio and the phone so if you'll touch this to see how heavy oh. things were in those days there was no chips for technology to make them lighter and smaller well i can see why no one uh, had phone calls very for a very long time back then take a stroll through the historic house or step outside for fresh air they're displayed out on the lawn are vintage tractors and a printing press even a choo-choo train for the kids and our time at the Heritage Museum wasn't over just yet. Right across on the same property is the house of a man who discovered oil right here in Montgomery County. He is George W. Strake. Let's go check out the Strake house. Ooh, this is a big house. The Heritage Museum relocated the Strake Gray House to Candy Cane Park in 2015. The first superintendent, Harvey Lee, lived in this home and was passed on to his successor, Clyde Thomas Gray. Clyde, also known as Dolly Gray, was also a star baseball player. Inside the house, you'll see baseball memorabilia hanging on the walls, as well as oil field collectives. And one of the drilling rigs from back in 1948, huh? Very cool. Uh-oh. See, you gotta be careful with these oil rigs. And this is why uh, let the professionals do it. Oops. So here's a tongue twister. Mr. Strake struck oil and the recession ended. Hey. In Montgomery County with this oil right here back in 1931. After talking with Miss Sally and Crystal, I think I have a better understanding of how things were run back in the day, but I also heard that Conroe has a phenomenal, beautiful historic theater that we need to check out. But before we head out that way, I need to make a stop at the bank first. Stay right there, more from the city of Conroe coming up after the break. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where we are right in the middle of our historical tour of Conroe, the birthplace of the Texas flag. We've already made our way to the Lone Star Monument and Flag Park, and to the Heritage Museum of Montgomery County. And up next, we're headed to the spirit of Texas Bank, a one-of-a-kind bank that isn't just a place for your finances, it's pretty much a historical museum all on its own. Scattered inside are beautifully carved sculptures and statues, extraordinary paintings, and detailed artifacts that hold significant value to our state's past. And to learn more about the spirit of Texas Bank, we met up with CEO Dean Bass. You know what I love is this is not your ordinary bank, right? There's a lot of history involved in, in these walls and in your artifacts that are placed around here. So how is this important to Conroe's history and Texas's history? The Spirit of Texas Plaza uh, developed around Texas Lady Liberty and uh, first and foremost putting a, a, a profitable bank here that can help the community and, uh, and last long after any of us. We had to build something that was worthy of Texas Lady Liberty mm -hmm. and so evolved Spirit of Texas Plaza. We have a number of different pieces here. We are a museum with a bank in it. There's no question about that. You won't find many banks that have the, the things that we do, but uh, that's, that's a contribution by a lot of different people. And we thank, uh, once again, the sons and the daughters of the Republic for all their contributions and all of their support to this, uh, this bank. Each piece of art tells a story of our state's becoming. So to further explain their relevance, 
We met up with the artists behind these exceptional sculptures. Well, this was never meant to be cast in bronze. This was the study piece for the 14-foot Texian at the Lone Star Monument Historical Flag Park. This also is the uh, study piece or the maquette for Texas Lady Liberty that's at the front of the corporate headquarters that we're in right now. This is Sam McCulloch Jr. He was the first man that was critically injured and spilled blood in the Texas Revolution. And he was a free black man. So I know Come and Take It is very iconic here in Texas. This cannon was given to the people of Gonzales by the uh, Mexican government and then when Santa Ana decided he wanted to take over and kick everybody out of the frontier, he sent 100 dragoons on horseback to come take this little cannon. But when they came over the hill, they saw 18 or so men standing out there with this flag that two women had made out of a wedding dress and some black cloth. And that's the famous come and take it flag. Y'all. All those pieces were exquisite, and I cannot believe that we just met the man behind all of the art. And speaking of artistry, how about we head to a theater that I hear has a ton of history on Conroe. Let's make our way. Awarded the ultimate venue outside the loop by the Houston Chronicle, the Crichton Theater offers performances that suits all tastes in the arts. From the Montgomery County Performing Arts Society to the highly acclaimed Sounds of Texas music series, this Conroe staple has hosted legendary artists and stars such as Guy Clark and Debbie Reynolds. All right, so right behind me is the historic Crichton Theater built all the way back get this, in 1934. So yeah, I guess you could say it has some serious history over the past 80 years, but that doesn't mean that it is a museum. It's a legit working theater. So who's ready to go inside? And lucky for us, the cast was rehearsing for the evening show of Into the Woods. And we slipped in for a sneak peek. Need a little world. Our little world is big enough for me. And to better understand the theater's influence on the town, we sat down with art director Carolyn. This theater has been long-standing. You said it was 80 plus years. Yes, 80 yes. plus Opened years. Opened in 1935. Wowzers! Yeah. So, I mean, I can only imagine what it means to the community of Conroe. Oh yeah. What do you say this means to the community? Oh, of Conroe? it it's it well it the Crichton Theater is known as the crown jewel of Montgomery County, and. It truly is. I mean, it is, a, as I had said before, just a beloved place in uh, many people's hearts here in Conroe. You have people that have such a, a deep love of this, of this space. All right, that is all the time we have here in Conroe. If you're into Texas state history or just passing through the area, definitely worth the trip. I want to say thank you to everyone for showing us around. The passion these folks have for their town is truly inspiring. All right, it's about that time I head inside and grab my seat. I'll catch you on the flip side. Experience the history of Texas for yourself by clicking visitconroe.com for more information. There is still more to come right here on Yolo Texas. May the luck of the Irish be with you as we make our way to the North Texas Irish Festival. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas. For our next destination, you may want to wear something green. Trust me on this one, because we are getting into the spirit of St. Patrick's Day with the holiday right around the corner, where we're heading to Dallas for the much anticipated annual North Texas Irish Festival. Welcome to the North Texas Irish Festival. Held every year for the last 36 years, it's three days of music, dancing, and sampling all the best that the Emerald Isle has to offer. So here there's food, dancing, beer, rides for the kids, multiple ways to really get to know the Irish culture. But you know, the main attraction really is all about the music. And I hear some tunes, so let's go find that music. 
Across 13 stages, some of the best music acts from all over Ireland, Scotland, and Wales have made the trip to Texas to join in in the celebration. And with so much to see and do, I met up with Sherry Bush, the director of the festival, to help me navigate all it had to offer. The North Texas Irish Festival has been going on for its 36th year. 36 oh years. Oh my goodness. So what makes this so special that people keep on coming back year after year after year? We have all sorts of things out here. Um, and it's just past the music. I mean, it is a music festival, so that is our biggest component. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we also have a, a, a building that's dedicated to Irish step dance. We have another building that's dedicated to uh, pet rescue groups. We got lots of furry friends out here. We have a great kids area, lots of activities for the kids, different things that they can get yeah. hands on with. Um, we have horses. Our, the Irish are known for their horses, <laughs> and we've got beautiful horses, got beautiful Irish draft horses out here. Um, just about, if you want it, it's here. Come hang out, have a drink, listen to some music, just explore your heritage. Uh, everybody's an Irishman in March. <laughs> and I can't wait to get going, so thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're a busy you lady. You're so welcome. <laughs> Our first stop, we swung by the Celtic Horse Experience to learn a little bit more about Ireland's equine heritage. So, you know, living in Texas, owning and riding a horse is a pretty big deal, but the Irish, they've actually been doing it way longer than we have, in fact, the Irish have a number of distinct breeds, so this demonstration gives folks an opportunity to get hands-on and see them all face-to-face -face and really learn about these guys. After that, we found another iconic symbol of Ireland, the DeLorean. So you may be a little confused as to why an American car is at an Irish festival. Well, while the DeLorean is an American car, it was actually built in Northern Ireland. So excuse me while I geek out a little bit. I've actually never been inside the DeLorean, so let's do this. Woo! All right, let's go Marty McFly 1985. Up next, a sheep herding demonstration complete with some seriously adorable shepherds. All right, so if you're a fan of the show, you know I absolutely love animals and normally I'm more of a dog person, but I also find sheep hilariously cute. So when we found an activity that combines the two, you know it was a must see. Sheep farming goes back centuries in Ireland and the country is well known for its wool. Well, we're just different because, I mean, if you're from the city, you've never seen a sheep and much less a dog work it. So, uh, you know, we're kind of old school history. We bring back a pastime to the Irish Festival and bring it back to its roots. So, good doggy. <laughs> One thing this Texas Irish Festival is really good at, building up an appetite. And fortunately for me, they had plenty of options for traditional Irish fare. I couldn't wait. Stay right there, more from the North Texas Irish Festival coming up after the break. Hey y'all, welcome back to the show where we are continuing our time at the North Texas Irish Festival. Back inside, the party was really kicking up with Susie's Cakes and for our food demo for the day, chocolate Guinness cupcakes. Once again, taking two things that I love and putting them together. This is um, our chocolate Guinness cupcake. So with the batter, it's basically kind of like a devil's food cakey chocolate batter. Um, and then, but we add beer to it. Oh so we goodness. use the dark drought um, Guinness beer. And then with our buttercream, it's an all American buttercream. So just your basic simple ingredients. And we add a little bit of Bailey's to it. Okay, and then you did some kind of swirl thing. Yep. Just swirl thing. She's Y'all, I did it! Yay! I did it. <sighs> and after a nice sugar rush, I explored more of what the festival had to offer. Oh my goodness! I love it! Say, I want a home, a forever home, right? Our rescue group is called New Life IFS Rescue, and we actually made a commitment this year in 2018 to give 100 service members, so veterans, active duty, retired, a service dog. So 100 service members, 100 service animals. So that's our commitment this year. It's called our One for One campaign. Look how precious. Okay, so right about now, I'm regretting I don't know how to Irish step dance, but luckily for me, there's a ton of demonstrations going on. And let me tell you, it's not as easy as it looks. 
but after a little work, I was actually kind of getting the hang of it. That's a work I'm retiring. <laughs> and as our day was winding down, I realized that there was one more thing that I had missed. No trip to the festival would be complete without a pint of Ireland's most famous export. All right, so Guinness has actually been around since 1759. Let me say that one more time, 1759. So if they've been doing it that long, you know it's definitely got to be good. So you know what they say? Slancha. What is it? Slancha. Yeah. Sanchez? All right, Slancha. acts they have performing this year. If you thought it was all Irish folk music, well, think again, because they really do have something for everyone. All right, so that does it for us here at the North Texas Irish Festivals. We had an absolute blast. If you're ever in Dallas and have the festivals in town, make sure to come check it out. In the meantime, we're gonna see you later. Yellow Texas. Want to learn more about the North Texas Irish Festival? Go to ntif.org for more information. All right, that is all the time we have here today on Yellow Texas. Make sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, it's a big world, so get out and explore it. You know what they say, you only live once, Texas. We'll see y'all next week. That's not how you cheer. <laughs> Let's go, Marty McFly. We're going to 1984. <laughs>